started writing, what great ideas that I can think of today that can improve me and that will enable me to reach my goal. And I just let my mind flow. Sometimes I write 15, 20 ideas. Some days it's more difficult than others. One idea can change your life. One idea can turn your life around. Deciding that you're going to focus to develop your skills. A guy was, was um, the new owner of a team. A team, a baseball team that was in the basement of the league when he took it over. He went to the pitcher and he said, what is your best throw? And he said, well, I got a good curveball and I've got a good fastball. And he went on talking about his different throws. He said, but tell me this, what is your best throw? He thought for a moment. He said, I've got a good fastball. He said, that's all I want you to work on. Nothing else. Just develop your fastball. The next year, they went to the World Series. Most people don't know where their fastball is. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. They have skills and abilities, but if you don't nurture them, if you don't develop them, they will never serve you. Your gifts can take you many places if you develop your gifts. Most of us don't like to do those things that come easy to us. I've always loved to talk to people. I decided taking this advice to develop my skills as a speaker and my gift has developed and it developed and has taken me many places. You have something that you brought to the universe and that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what I do well and becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me, if you decide to drop your buckets where you are and develop your gifts, I grant you, you'll never ever be without. I grant you that your gifts will take you places that will literally amaze you. I grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts, you'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. That people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. And people know it. And you know it. And you know that you know that you know this. If you don't know anything else, you know this. Can you tell I know I know what I'm doing? Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> you know this. So you've got to work on it. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have this, the strength of character to concentrate, to read, to digest information. If you decide in any particular area that you're concerned about to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to read one book a month in that area, in five years, you'll be among the top 5% experts in the world. I read a minimum of two books a week. The average American reads only one book a year. If you decide that area that you love, that you are going to master that particular area, in this era of accelerated change, overwhelming complexity and tremendous competition, as you begin to develop and expand your skills and your talents and your vision of yourself, you will always be in control of your destiny. The next thing is whatever it is that you want to do, you want to do it massively. I have a friend who was telling me that his sales were down. I said, well, how many phone calls you make a day? He said, 25. I said, double them. Make 50 or 75 or 100. He said, oh man, that's just too much. He said, what do you mean too much? You behind on your bills? You're talking about too much? You know one way to get back on your feet real quick is to miss two car payments? <laughs> you're talking about you're tired? There's no competition out here. Decide that you're going to push yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? 
There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. They asked Benjamin Disraeli, a man who became the head of a country at a time when Jews were not allowed out after 10 o'clock. They said, how did you do it? How do you achieve against such great odds? He said, nothing can resist the will of a people that will stake even their existence on the extent of their purpose for good. That when you have a made up mind, when you decide that you want to do something, I was reading something the other day, he said, the power to hold on in spite of everything, the power to endure, this is the winner's quality. The hunger, the ability to face defeat again and again without giving up. This is a winner's quality. You have that quality within you. When you're hungry, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the odds. Doug Williams played for the Washington Redskins, quarterback. John Elway of the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl. Everybody was talking about Elway, Elway. After the Super Bowl, when Doug Williams made a historic passing game, they asked him, said, how were you able, in spite of all of that negative publicity, saying that you couldn't win, how did, how did you do it? He said, I ignored my critics. I just didn't pay any attention to them. I ignored myself because they kept on saying it so much. There were times I doubted whether or not I can do what I needed to do. There's a Doug Williams in everybody here. There's greatness in you. And you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will. And I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. I'm going to do it until. And this friend, I told him, said, start increasing your calls. I said, I make a hundred calls a day. I got a callus in my ear. My ear kind of dark. You can't see it, but it's there. <laughs> His sales have increased. <laughs> He's working harder now. <laughs> the other thing is that if you want something, you have got to be relentless. You've got to learn how to become resourceful. You've got to learn how to become creative. When crises strike in your life, and in the Chinese language, crises mean danger, but it also means opportunity. And this is an opportunity for you to grow. And you've got to be so relentless, regardless of what comes down the pike, that you're always looking for a way to get over, always looking for a way that you can break through, always looking for a way that you can win, always looking for a way that you can strike a telling blow. And pretty soon, I think there's some people watching us in the universe that say, wait, let's call a meeting over here. You know that guy Mustafa, look at him down there. He won't stop, just that fool don't know he can't get over. Look, look, look. <laughs> Look, look here, why don't we do this? Let him go and let's make, mess with somebody else. Just let him go on through. Life will just get tired of whipping you sometimes. And just say, let's just let this one go. <laughs> I believe this. Now, no one has told me this, but I just kept on kicking. I didn't have sense enough to stop. I was intelligently ignorant. I didn't know what I couldn't do. <laughs> so I just tried anything. And the fascinating thing about life, because you can't get out of it alive, you might as well have a good time, you know? <laughs> you might as well have a good time. Live your life with passion, with some drive. I was giving a seminar the other day and I mentioned that I was going to do some training in August with some young teenagers and take about a hundred away to a two or three day camp and wipe them out. Been working on this. So after the speech, one of the parents walked up to me and said, Mr. Brown, I, I'd like for you to do something for my son. He's not motivated. I said, I wonder why. I wonder what's wrong with him. <laughs> he had no fire whatsoever. <laughs> See, what, 
what you do speak so loudly, folk can't hear what you're saying. And so if you don't have any fire, you know, you've got to watch the, the people, the relationships that you develop. Have people of, of, of kindred mindsets. If you're around folk who are dead and negative all the time, they will affect you. You want people that are around you that have smiles on their faces, looking good. I was telling a group last week, Abraham Lincoln refused to hire a guy because of his face. They said, but the guy can't help it. He said, anybody over 30 is responsible for their face. <laughs> if you have some depressing face looking at you every day, it affects your blood pressure. <laughs> Keep these dead faces away from you. It's contagious. <laughs> this is serious. So you've got to watch your countenance, watch your face, have an uplifted expression, watch your body posture. All of these things affect you psychically. You've got to be the kind of person that you are fearless. Fearless, folk leave fearless people alone. <laughs> there are some people walk 